Hello, my name is Elizabeth Rose, and I am a Training and Development Coordinator at Vanderbilt University. I'd like to acknowledge that many of the ideas in this video have been adapted from Everyday Leadership, a product of iTech, which is a collaboration between the University of Washington and the University of California, San Francisco. Now consider for a moment what level of influence you have among your colleagues, peers, students, other researchers, and even within your family and friends. From time to time, most of us experience a frustrating limit on our influence and feel that we may be too insignificant to make a difference. But have you ever been in bed with a mosquito? You can probably attest to the big impact that the little insect had on your sleep. The Dalai Lama reminds us that if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. In this leadership presentation, I will discuss ways that you can leverage your influence. The leadership and management approach that I use is based on this framework. Leadership is founded upon self-awareness, which is knowing your strengths, weaknesses, and values. Then through self-development, leaders engage in practical training and learning opportunities like this one. And ultimately, these influence self-determination through which leaders like you apply skills and tools in their own environments. Leadership is a constant cycle of reflection, development, and practice. And this se session will focus on self-awareness and on self and on self-development. The need for increased leadership and management capacity in global health is increasingly being acknowledged. In 2007, the World Health Organization published the Health System Strategy Framework for Action that you can see here. This framework includes six building blocks for health system strengthening. Leadership and governance is one of the six building blocks of a well-functioning health sy system. If all six blocks func function effectively and deliver their intended results, the assumption is that the entire health system, which includes healthcare organizations, programs, schools, and research, is strong. Together, these building blocks are the foundation for health systems that support access to high-quality health services, leading to positive health outcomes for patients and communities, especially those who are most vulnerable and underserved. When we think of a leader, the most common image is a dominant leader, such as a coach, president, military figure, or man. The stereotype of a dominant leader can hold back other potential leaders, such as people who are introspective, quiet, young, ethnic minorities, or female. It is important to promote leadership among all people and at all levels of an organization. The theory of leadership as practice defines leadership as the interactions among group members. Leadership then becomes the property of the group and must be distributed. It is our task to recognize our capacity for leadership and to build the leadership capacity of others. Every person plays a part in leadership. To develop our leadership, we'll study Stephen Covey, who has developed seven habits that highly effective people use in their personal lives and at work. Today, I will focus on the first habit, being proactive. Habits drive our actions, are part of our character, and fortunately can be learned and unlearned. So what does proactive mean? Well, the dictionary defines proactive as acting in advance to deal with an expected difficulty. Stephen Covey adds that proactive means taking initiative. And why is being proactive useful? Well, it helps us to initiate change. Being proactive means taking responsibility for your life, your emotions, and your actions, and doing whatever is in your power to improve your situation. In taking control of their lives, proactive people focus on things they can do something about. So what is the opposite of proactive? A proactive person who is not proactive is reactive. A reactive person is controlled by their emotions, moods, and or the situation or environment that they are in. Reactive people do not take responsibility for their lives and they blame others. Reactive people give excuses for their behavior and say, this is my boss's fault or my grandmother was this way. So when we think or say, he makes me so mad, this means I let someone else control my emotions. And when we say, I can't do that, I don't have time, this means that something outside of ourselves, like limited time, is controlling us. Or when we say, I have to do it, I'm really saying circumstances or other people are forcing me to do it. I'm not free to choose my own actions. 
However, proactive people recognize that they are responsible. They don't blame genetics, circumstances, or conditions for their behavior. Our behavior is a function of our decisions, not our conditions. Proactive people are agents for change. They choose not to be reactive or to blame others. Being conscious of our behavior language is a good way to become self-aware. This is the first step to self-development. Why, in your experience, is it important to be proactive? As Covey says, act or you will be acted upon. You have the power to decide if you will be proactive or reactive. Covey illustrates this concept using circles of concern and circles of influence. For example, we can be concerned about the weather, but we can't do anything to change it. We can, however, control our emotions and act to change how we experience the situation by bringing an umbrella. We can see these spheres of concern and influence at play in our families and at work. Although parents can't control who their ch children will grow up to be, they can control their own behavior and set a good example for their children when they are young, which in turn influences who the child will be in the future. Likewise, we can control our research and other work, which may influence policy change that will later impact health in our communities. Instead of being consumed with worry about future grown children or the community, we can control our actions to positively influence these concerns. Stephen Covey explains that being proactive is based on the idea that between a stimulus and a response, you have the freedom to choose. You have the freedom to choose your reaction to a situation, and you have the opportunity to use your free will and hard work to change yourselves and your circumstances. Humans have four elements that give us the freedom to choose our reaction to any given situation. Independent will is the ability to act and respond to a situation freely. For example, if my computer, which has the only copy of my paper I was working on, has crashed, in this, using my independent will, I believe that I can overcome the situation. Conscience includes values, morals, and a deep inner awareness of right and wrong. For example, if one of my colleagues is spreading untrue gossip about me, by calling on my conscience, I will choose to respond with integrity. Self-awareness is knowing who I am and being, a, being aware of self-limitations as well as my strengths. For example, if I am frustrated that I haven't had electricity in my apartment for three days and my landlord isn't responding to me, I know that I can control my actions and not take my frustrations out on my colleagues. And finally, imagination allows us to imagine a better future and be creative in those imaginations. An excellent way to become more self-aware is to reflect on where we focus our time and energy. Do you focus more on the things you cannot influence or on the things you can influence and control? Each of us has many concerns. Covey suggests that people gain more influence on all their concerns by first focusing on influencing and changing only the things they can directly control. Think for a moment about the concerns that you have. You may want to pause this video and draw a circle and write your concerns in it. Think about each concern in your circle and decide if it is something you can control. We'll move these to an inner circle and label it control. This inner circle represents the problems, challenges, and opportunities that we have direct control over, such as our own research, work, house, and family. Problems we have control over involve our own behavior, our actions, and our attitudes. Now consider what you have indirect control or influence over. Maybe it's your children or your students. We can influence our neighborhood, our church, our work, our environment, friends, colleagues, and family. We can influence them, but we cannot control them. Finally, all of our concerns fall into the outer circle, which represents things we have no control over, such as weather, politics, and policies that are far beyond our personal reach. These three circles are known as the circles of concern, influence, and control. Which circle is the source of many of your worries and conversations? By determining which of these circles is the focus of most of our time and energy, we can discover much about the degree of our proactivity. 
Once we can identify our circles of control, influence, and concern, we can be proactive about smartly reacting to our environment and creating change. Reactive people focus on their efforts in the circle of concern. They focus on circumstances over which they have no control. Their focus results in blaming and accusing attitudes, reactive language, and feeling like a victim of their environment. This negative energy that is generated by that focus, combined with neglect in areas that they could do something about, causes their circle of influence to shrink. However, proactive people focus their efforts in the circle of influence. Their positive energy can cause this circle to increase. They work on the things they can do something about. By diverting your attention to your circle of influence, you can then indirectly affect the circle of concern. To leverage our influence, we must accept the things we cannot change, have courage to change the things we can, and be wise enough to know the difference. You are a leader. You may have formal leadership, or you may informally lead through influencing those around you and being a role model to your peers. You have the responsibility for your actions. You choose how to control how you react and where you will spend your time. The choices you make will impact your level of influence. Leadership is the capacity to help shape what happens next. Thank you for watching this video and good luck leveraging your influence to impact change.